Hello everyone, welcome to episode 4 of All the Mods 10 Myth Busting, and today we're going to be going further into Extreme Reactors. So the first thing I need to do is correct myself on something from last episode. So last episode I said that you need at least an 8x8 reactor to supply enough steam for one of these optimized turbines, uh, but turns out I was wrong. You actually still only need the 7x7. I am not sure what made it so that my 7x7 was not providing enough steam earlier, uh, but I have now confirmed that you truly only do need 7x7, so as you can see, this is reducing 2.35 buckets per tick, and the maximum intake of one of these turbines is only 2,000 millibuckets per tick, which translates to 2 buckets per tick, so 7x7 is actually a, a tiny bit more than enough to fully keep up an optimized turbine. So next I wanted to test if you could get away with just placing your coolant at the very top of your reactor and letting it flow down versus placing it every single layer. So what I mean by that is placing it at the top and letting it flow down would be just like this. You only place one source at the top and then placing it every single layer would be like this. Alright, so what I did was I voided all the reactants and then inserted 64 uh, uranium ingots worth of fuel and I let them run for quite a long time. And this is the result, so the double source one produced a total of 2.48 megabuckets, and the single source one produced a total of 2.45 megabuckets. So yeah, there's really no difference in the total output that you get, whether you're using single source or double source. And also, while they were running, it's worthy of noting that they were pretty much at the exact same amount every time. So I think it's safe to say you can get away with using single source. You'll lose out on the tiniest, tiniest fraction of a percent of efficiency, but I don't think it really matters that much. I don't think it's worth all the extra effort of making every single block a source block. Next, I wanted to test out all of these coolants or moderators or whatever you want to call them. So I built a reactor for every single one, including nothing or just air. And here are the results. So as you can see, vibranium actually had the lowest uh, temperature and uh, unobtadium had the highest output of steam per tick. Uh, but something kind of weird with vibranium is that it fluctuates a lot. The temperature, you can see it's bouncing between like uh, 250 and 380. So I just tried to take an average there. Um, so that's why vibranium's like that. So maybe it's not perfectly accurate, but it's the best I got. Uh, so yep, that's just something interesting to note. Next, I wanted to test the fuel efficiency of each reactor, so what I did was I put 64 ingots of uranium into each reactor and ran them until they all ran completely dry and then recorded the total steam output from all of them, and here are the results of that. So as you can see, all the modium and red phrygium were really close neck and neck, but red phrygium pulled through in the end. Uh, so yeah, if you want the most bang for your buck in terms of uranium, then go ahead and use red phrygium, and red phrygium also is a lot easier to get than all the modium, as well as being a liquid, so you're able to just put it at the very top of your reactor and let it flow down. As we established earlier, it really doesn't make any difference if you uh, just place a source at the top and let it flow down versus placing a source on every single block. One final thing to note about all these coolants here is that copper is probably the absolute worst of all of them. So basically what happens is when you put copper into your reactor, it will oxidize over time. And oxidized copper cannot be used in your reactor. It has to be completely unoxidized copper. Um, but the strange thing is that you also cannot use waxed copper. So if we look here, you can see normal copper can be used as a moderator. Waxed copper cannot. So... Uh, if you use normal copper, it's going to oxidize over time, and then it's going to brick your reactor. So I'm trying to right-click and access this reactor, but it's not working, because as you can see, the copper inside is oxidized. So yeah, I would advise against using copper as a moderator whatsoever. And the last thing we're going to test today is this claim that if you keep a turbine rotor or reactor on for too long at too high of a speed or temperature, then it will fail, quote-unquote, catastrophically. But as you can see, that's really not the case here. I have this turbine at, let's see, 13,000 RPM, and uh, the normal RPM it should be at is about 2,000 or 1.8 thousand. Um, and yeah, it's been running like this for like hours, uh, multiple tick warps, multiple three-day tick warps, um, and yeah, of course, nothing's happened. This landscape's pretty beautiful. Actually, the seed as a whole is pretty nice. Maybe I'll leave it in the description. Uh, same goes for this gigantic reactor over here. You can see it's been on for a while. The core heat is pretty high, but um, still has not blown up. 
uh, and is uh, it's producing a decent amount of power too, but that's besides the point. Point is, you don't have to worry about these things blowing up. Uh, that is not a feature that has actually been implemented. Maybe they'll implement it someday, but for now, you do not have to worry about it. But yeah, I think that's going to wrap up this episode of All the Mods 10 Mythbusting. Make sure to keep an eye out for the optimized reactor tutorial to power your turbines. Uh, but anyways, I'll see you guys next time.